Well, good morning, everyone. If you're able to, please rise for our first song. You may be seated. Well, we welcome God into this house of worship with praise. Amen? Amen. Can you hear me okay? Yeah? Can you see the screen okay? Awesome. You know what? We just had total chaos before our service, but our audiovisual committee was here working like mad to get the system set up and get it running again. It was 1024 when everything was working. And we were at it since I got here. So can we give our audiovisual committee a a hand? Because if it was left to me, you were just going to have audio. (laughs) That was it. We didn't have any screen, so it was fantastic. I'm very thankful for our audiovisual committee and their work on that and their commitment to uh, helping us worship the Lord. I want to welcome those who are joining us online. We uh, have a camera in our sanctuary videotaping this. At, uh, are we live today or is it recorded? 
Let's live. So welcome to those who are joining us live. If you don't know my name, I'm Chris Lang, and I'm the pastor of the church. So glad that you can join us as well. Well, friends, I got a few announcements that we want to share. First, we had uh, our third and final bomb fire, church bomb fire of the year, and we had that at Joanne and Fred Wilkie's place, and that was fantastic. Thank you for those who were able to come. It was a beautiful night. There's a picture on our Facebook page of the fire. And, uh, you know, it was one of those country fires. See, I live in a town, so my fire's like this big, and out there it was huge. So there you go. It was good. I still have my eyebrows, so I'm okay. That's good. Uh, so that, that is done. We've been at the farmer's market this summer. We've already had two times. And you know what? I'm going to say one thing about that. The farmer's market's rained both of those times. So... Uh, we have one more time, August 31st. Can you do me a favor and just be praying that we have good weather and that people are able to come and, uh, and, can, and that we will be able to have the opportunity to connect with them? It'd be fantastic. That is August 31st. It's a Wednesday. Don't worry. It's not Labor Day weekend. It's a Wednesday. If you're in town, come say hi to those who are volunteering. Encourage them while they're there. Uh, it is a lot of quiet time, so it would be great to have you just pop by and say hi. Also looking at what we're coming up ahead. You know, everyone's probably groaning and going, oh, no more uh, bonfires. Well, we have a corn roast that is planned at uh, Jane and Sonia's place. Uh, and that is going to be on Sunday, August 28th. And it's going to be right after the service. So I've been told, don't be long-winded that Sunday. So Paul, you're not allowed to talk that day either. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. There you go. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, Paul. Um, so we're going to be doing that. Uh, there's also some other exciting things that are coming up. Uh, we are going to have a fall kickoff event on uh, September 17th. It's a Saturday. Now, here's the cool thing. Uh, uh, last year, during for our VBS, we had laser tag as the big event. And Maddie, Wy Maddie Wiley and, uh, well, Maddie Wiley, it's not Maddie Wiley, it's Matt, what is it? Masterick, yeah. And Wiley and Nick, uh, um, have this wonderful laser tag business uh, that they do, and they go to different places, and they even go to churches. And so this VBS, we did it la last year, and the sanctuary was used. We actually played laser tag. They cover the window, so it's all dark in here. They have this, this uh, vapor that makes it kind of cloudy in here, and there's lights flashing and all that. Uh, and uh, there's different things that block people here, like little barriers and walls, and you just zap each other with lasers, and it's a fun, exciting game. We're offering that free to our community to come, and it will be 12 to 4. And so what we're hoping is our church family will come as well. Uh, and our job is just to connect with people, talk to them about the church, and uh, make sure people feel welcome and uh, know how uh, wonderful this church is and to invite them to, to come on a Sunday and not just uh, come on a day where we're zapping each other with laser beams. But anyway, more details of that will be uh, sent to you. So just uh, plan to be there uh, September 17th. It's going to be a fun day for that. Now, there's a few other things that are coming up. Uh, we have uh, in our community a fall fair, the Dundalk Fall Fair. And uh, there's a couple things happening there. I've asked Paul to come up, and he's going to just share what we're doing on the Saturday. And you can share what's going on on the Sunday as well, if you'd like. Okay. Thank you. I'll take the hint. Only a 20-minute announcement. <laughs> Anyways. All right. First of all, at the fair, the wonderful thing was uh, the fair committee got a whole, actually contacted us to see if there's any possibility that uh, the Dundalk Wesleyan Church would have any any venue at the fair at all because they had absolutely nothing for children and we welcome that with open arms because we are going to have a table there there's going to be an event there representing the church and what's going to happen there there's going to be face painting face painting for the kitties the Noah's Ark bean bag and so what we need, we need some, there's already a schedule in the work and some people have already committed, but we still need more. 
And the more we have, the less number of hours you'll be there. But I know you'll want to be there and excited to be about there because what we're going to be doing along with those events for the kiddies, um, there's going to be adult or helpers there handing out our four by six or whatever is invitation card to Dundalk Wesleyan Church, the, uh, introducing the work of the church because we've got lots of new people in our community, both in town and out of town. And... Uh, the other thing that we'll be introducing at the fair will be an announcement tagged to it, introducing our Sunday school program that is to launch September the 18th. So the other thing I want to ask you, what we do need, there's some people already in place for face painting, but you've got to remember there's been no face painting for three years. So I think a lot of the face painters have gone off to college or someplace. So if you, have a, if you have a friend, a relative, a niece, a nephew, a granddaughter, a grandson who likes to face paint and has just a little bit of artistic talent, would you please invite them and or let me or give me their telephone number and I'll get in contact with them. So anyways, I'm looking at somebody I'm going to ask after church. So. <laughs> anyways, so that's what's going to happen and that happens on the 10th, okay? So please contact me, contact me or speak to me after church or get a hold of Pastor Chris and we'll put things together. The other thing on the Sunday, the, the dance committee are putting together a community church service and they wanted a keynote exciting speaker and there's one all lined up and prepared to be there. So after you've been here on the 18th, I'm inviting you to come and sort and uh, support on the 11th, that's right. 10th is the 10th is the Saturday, and the 11th, thank you, dear, is the Sunday, and that speaker happens to be this guy right here. So, so, and they've changed all the time. So, I know it'd be really encouraging if you uh, could be part of that. So, thank you, Pastor Chris. Thank you, Paul. Yes, a service for the ecumenical service and ecumenical talking about all the churches there being gathered together. The service is at 1 p.m. on Sunday, uh, September 11th. And so there you go. It's going to be an exciting weekend for sure. Uh, also, we have uh, just an announcement for refreshments. We need more people to sign up for refreshments. We don't have anyone for next week, for example. And so, yeah, so three, the next three weeks solid are empty. So it's not a huge commitment. It's about making coffee and all that. And if, uh, if you're able to do that, you can sign up. If you have any questions, you can talk to Sylvie. I'm going to get Sylvie to come up because Sylvie has announcements uh, about Secret Sisters. Good morning. Good morning. Um, well, I also have a, a little stipulation about the cornrows next week. We're providing the hot dogs, hamburgers, and the corn, but we're asking the church to bring dessert, drinks, extra drinks, okay? Um, as for the Secret Sisters, it's going to take place on Saturday, September 24th at 1.30 to 3 o'clock, and that's when we're going to reveal ourselves to the sister we've been praying for throughout the year. I'll be sending out some invites through email, mail, uh, on instructions on what we're going to do that day. And I'll be calling people to fill out new prayer cards if you want to be part of it for the next season of 2022, 2023. Okay, so you'll be getting a call from me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And that's such a wonderful way to encourage each other for the ladies of our church. Um, I know Tina enjoys being a part of that. And uh, I'm usually her deli mail deliverer. If you see me sneaking around town, <laughs> it's because I'm passing on things that she's asked me to quietly pass on to someone else. There you go. Um, now, we're not only the ones doing stuff. There's stuff happening around in our community and beyond. And so I've asked Terry Gowdy, who's going to share uh, an event that's an annual event. Uh, and uh, maybe you've already have attended one of these events in the past. I'll keep it uh, brief. Uh, some of you may have been to the big tent at my uh, brother's farm, East Back Line. It's uh, between Flesherton and Markdale. How many have been there in the past? Oh, okay, good. Yeah. So uh, anyways, uh, this uh, is the big weekend, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. And uh, you'll have to look at the poster. I gave it to Tina. I don't know. Is it going to be on the back bulletin board or? 
Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. So the details are there. There's also some green brochures you can pick up for information. But on Saturday, I think it's most of the day, it's come and go, and then there's an evening service, and there's special music every night, special groups coming in. Uh, my old boss, uh, who's now the national director for the Canadian church, is uh, going to be speaking on Sunday night. So special music, and then on Saturday there's food, or maybe Saturday and Sunday, hamburgers and corn, and there's a, I think there's going to be an auto show, a jumpy thing for kids, a petting zoo. It's all free to raise money for uh, Canadian food grains. And I think there's about 15 different denominations that are in on that deal. So it's an ecumenical fundraiser to feed the hungry. So more information, you can get a bro uh, brochure at the back of the church. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you. I will also try and include information about that in our uh, weekly uh, email. If uh, you don't receive that weekly email, um, I'm getting told, get it closer. There. Can you hear me now? Okay. Sorry. Uh, I'll be trying to put that in our weekly email. If you don't get our weekly email, just let me know. I'm happy to give you that, uh, put you on that email list. It's uh, it's great information. You know, at the beginning of COVID, we stopped handing out the church bulletins. And so we haven't stopped sending out the announcements. We just have changed the way we do it. And now we are sending it out by email. So fantastic. Well, that's it for all of our announcements. We're going to begin our service today with a call to worship, which is Psalm 108. It's verses one to five. My heart, O God, is steadfast. I will sing and make music with all my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I awake the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love. Higher than the heavens, your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, our God, we just give you thanks for today. May your name be glorified. May our songs of praise and the unity of our hearts be a sweet offering to you. Be with us as we worship you. In Christ's name we pray. And all the people said, amen. Amen. Join us for another song.
Be seated. 
Well, I see we have Pastor Don here. Last week, I thanked Pastor Don for filling in for me while I was away. And I'd like to give you guys a, a, an opportunity to express your appreciation for Pastor Don filling in for while I was away. Can you give him a hand and just say thanks? That was good. So grateful to have you be there when I needed you. So that was wonderful. Well, friends, this is a time for our Kids Corner. It's when I talk to the youngest of those who are with us and those who are young at heart. We don't have any kids with us today, uh, but I'm still going to do it because what, when I share these lessons with you, it's my hope that you will share them with the little ones in your lives, be they uh, grandchildren or neighbors or what have you. Today, I have a couple objects with me. You know what they are? What are they? Salt and pepper. I was getting worried. You're really quiet. Say it with confidence. What are they? Okay, good. You got a little worried there. Maybe, maybe you're not. I'm supposed to not have too much of this stuff. And I love this stuff. But anyway, but you notice you don't usually like see, go to a restaurant, sit down. You don't usually just see a salt or just a pepper. They, they go together, right? You know, at home, do you guys have salt and pepper sitting at the table or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, it's, uh, these things are amazing. They can take some pretty bland meals and make them taste wonderful. You know, sometimes you wonder when people come visit you and then you're giving them made a meal and you just see them. <laughs> it's like, there's no hope for that meal. <laughs> but, you know, they just pour the salt and pepper on and enjoy, right? Well, it's funny, you know, they're very different. Like if you tasted pepper, does anyone want to taste pepper for me and shake it in their hand? And, no, I don't think so. You wouldn't really want a mouthful of salt, hey, right? you know? No, look at my mouth is watering just thinking. <laughs> Going, no, no, there's not enough water. If you just did a mouthful of salt, you'd be sick. But, you know, they, together, they, they make something beautiful. And salt and pepper kind of remind me of the fact that, uh, you know, about friendships, about relationships. You know, often we think, oh, we can do this on our own. We don't need anybody. But having that friend to be there, to encourage us, to offer us strength when we're down, uh, often the things that we do together, when we do it together, are more beautiful and wonderful than if we just did it on our own. And so I just th want us to think about how important our friendships are. Here at church, you know, we're not just a bunch of individuals who come here to worship God alone. We develop friendships, deep connections, and we share that with our friends at school or, or for the grown-ups at work. And, we're, and wherever, and each time we, we build these uh, friendships, we ourselves are better for it. God gives us some scripture. It's in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, it's verse 9 and 10, where it says, Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. So today I just want us to... Think about how important the people are in our lives, those friendships that we hold dear, and get, take time today to give thanks to God for our friendships, for the people who are in our lives. I often tell my best friend, Tina, that I'm better because she is a part of my life, and that's what we have with our friendships. So let's cherish our friendships and be thankful for them. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for our friends and for the blessing of friendship. And thank you for the things we hold in common and for the differences between us, just like salt and pepper and how they don't taste the same, but together make something more beautiful. We thank you for those differences. Thank you, Lord, for our friends that enlarge our world and strengthen us and help us in our times of need. And we, thank, and we just thank you, Lord. Uh, that we have the ability to make more friends. And we pray that you help us to reach out to make more friends and be that friend that someone needs. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Well, it's a little scary thought when you got the salt and pepper shaker right beside you when you're about to preach, trying to make it taste better, right? <laughs> so we'll put that, we'll put that over here. <laughs> we are uh, moving into our time in which we focus on God's word. We've been working uh, our way through the book of James. We're working our way right through it. Uh, it's been a great study. Uh, James is a meat and potatoes kind of guy. You think I got food on my mind today or something. James is a meat and potatoes kind of guy. And what that means is he, he just, he digs in deep with those things that are, are, uh, just practical, real, important, and, uh, you know, lasting. And so that's what James has done. He's written his letter. We call it a book, the book of James, but it's a, it's a letter or a fancy name for it in church is an epistle. Uh, he wrote it uh, to encourage the church. And some of his encouragement is really, you know, awe-inspiring good. And some of it's some tough love. And we do need tough love at times. People need to tell us the truth when we're go going off track. And he does that as well. James spends most of his uh, letter, most of the book of James, focusing on the stumbling blocks that can prevent us from practicing what he called true religion, true religion. In our context, in our day and age, we probably would better understand as saying an authentic faith, a real faith, you know? So we've been working our way through the study, as I said, for a long time. We started uh, after Easter. And I want to remind you some of the, of the early lessons that we've covered so far. I'm not going to cover them all, but I want to remind you some of the earlier ones, simply because it's been that time frame, it's been so long. But all these lessons tie together. And by the way, if you feel like you've missed a sermon or you want to go back and look at that kind of stuff, you can always go back onto our YouTube page. All of the sermons are there. They are uh, listed in the subject line. So you can see, I, I titled every sermon with the beginning of with the word James. So you can see those and look at those things. So there you go. So here's some of the things that we covered way back when. James has challenged us to examine our attitude, in particular, when we face hardships. Generally speaking, we don't like dealing with problems. Dennis, do you like problems? No, of course not. We don't like problems. You know, we don't like experiencing pain. Most of us do our very best to avoid problems and avoid pain. And when we do face hardships or experience pain, we often feel what? We feel frustrated. We question. We get angry. You know, we're confused. Why is this happening to me kind of stuff? Uh, but James has reminded us that God uses trials to strengthen and refine us in our faith. It's the school of hard knocks, guys. That's what life is and all the problems that we face. It's the school of hard knocks. That refining process that God lets us go through uh, only can happen. You can have piles of problems and you can keep going through the same problems again and again and again. And you can have the attitude where you don't learn. You can dig in your heels and say, you know what? I don't get this. I don't want this. I'm going to fight it every uh, step of the way. Uh, you can be stubborn about it. It only works. God provides these opportunities. It only works if we're willing to choose how we're going to approach those struggles. When we choose to accept those things, when we choose to say, you know what? Instead of fighting it, I'm going to learn from it. Instead of seeing it as a hardship and a problem and people um, pummeling me, I am going to look at it as an opportunity to grow, to overcome. When we choose that, when we choose not to focus on the temporary suffering, but choose to look on the long game, on eternity, that's when we actually benefit from these things. James also talked about money and our financial status. And that's a good thing. I'm glad James does that because, you know, they say money is taboo. You don't talk about money, but James deals with it. It's a good thing because money plays such a big part of our lives. It even bleeds into our faith and what, how we see things. 
You often think that, oh, if we are rich, if we've got a lot of money in the bank, if we're living a very comfortable lifestyle, if we've got all the toys, if my mortgage is paid off, I have no financial woes, we say, God must think I'm doing the right thing has blessed me. You know, even back then in biblical times, they thought that. But we've learned that money, first of all, money is not evil. It is a tool. But we've also learned, and more importantly, we've learned that money or the lack of money isn't a sign of God's approval or disapproval. All right? If you got money, yay. If you don't got money, yay. It doesn't mean that God is blessing you or cursing you. All right? Money is not that a factor in that. When it comes to money, the important thing we need to remember is that we are to put our trust in God rather than the money we may have. And that we learned is actually more challenging for those who actually have money. Because if you have the money, you have to then make the choice to trust God. If you don't have money, God's your only answer, right? When you're at the end of your rope, you turn to him, no problem, right? And so there you go. James has encouraged us also to get involved. And this is a really important lesson for us to be reminded of. of. We are called to put our hand to the plow, to contribute and give, rather than to sit back and to be passive when it comes to our faith. You know, one of the unique things that has happened since the pandemic is just the disengagement that people have gotten themselves into. I'm not just talking about the church. I'm talking about every community group that you can think of. Everyone is desperate for volunteers. Things are shutting down because people aren't getting involved. We are called to get involved. We are called to be active, proactive, to put our hand to the plow. And we are called to show each other love. And this, and this is how we, you know, we show our love by how we treat each other and how we work together as a church. We've been called to love God and to love each other. This isn't just a theoretical idea, something that we nod our heads to and then go home and forget about it. We are called to put it in practice in real and intangible ways. It's about investing our time. It's about investing our energy. It's about investing our resources into each other in, and in the work that we as a local body of faith are doing as we share the good news of God's love with our community. Through our study of the book of James, we've also received some tough love, as I mentioned. James has talked about temptation, and, it, and he's very clear on who we are to blame when we fall into temptation and sin. And he is very clear on who, like as I said, we are to blame. I jumped a line there. It's so easy for us in those times of uh, uh, when we are caught with our hand in the cookie jar to offer excuses, to try and pass the blame. I didn't want to do it. They made me do it, right? But if we want to have an authentic faith, if we want to have a real faith, then we've got to be real and truthful with ourselves. And when we fall into temptation and when we allow sin into our lives, you know, uh, the devil may present opportunities for us to sin. He's really good at laying the table, but it's our choice to sit down at that table and dig in, right? It's our choice to say, yes, I want to do what I know is wrong. And we have to take ownership of that and move forward. Because if we don't take ownership from that, we're never going to learn. We're going to continue to live and struggle with that sin. James has, James has also shown us that we have a clear choice to make. And this is one of those lessons I touched on last week. We have a clear choice to make when it comes to faith. We can choose to have an authentic faith, which takes uh, work and sacrifice. It's really hard to do uh, consistently, but that's what we are called to do if we want an authentic faith. Uh, and the reason we do that is because an authentic faith is fulfilling and it's meaningful. Or we can choose a cheap faith that is often being dangled in front of our eyes. 
This is a cheap faith caters to our self-centeredness and our own personal comfort, but in the end, leaves us lacking. Well, guys, we're near the end of our study of James. It's only five chapters, and we're today at the uh, end of chapter 4. We're going to be reading verses 13 to 17. So before we get into our scripture, let's pray. Lord God, thank you for this study of the book of James we've been, that we've been working through. It's been good. There has been a lot, of a, a lot for us to work through, and you've given us a lot to think about and reflect on. As we continue our study, Lord, help us to hear, uh, hear you today and to learn uh, that which you wish us to learn. We thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're now into James chapter 4. We're reading verses 13 to 17. Now listen, you who say tomorrow or today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while, then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone, anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. I have a story for you. Steve and Zoe were first time expecting parents. Steve had done an exceptionally good job at preparing for the baby to be. He renovated the baby's room, making sure it had everything a newborn baby could ever need. He went out and bought diapers and baby wipes and all those other things that keep the, a baby happy. He did his research and Steve bought the best and safest crib, the stroll, uh, safest cr crib and stroller that money could buy. He spent hours researching baby monitors and he purchased one that connected to his phone that would alert him uh, to when the baby was awake. Steve did his research and got a car seat that was rated five stars for, uh, out of five for safety. And there were baby clothes, uh, blankets. Steve attended every prenatal appointment that Zoe had. He took the Lamaze classes and he read every book he could get his hands on about having a baby and what to do in the first five years of the baby's life. As the time got closer, Steve mapped out the best routes to get to the hospital from home, from work, oh, and from the grocery store, and from uh, the bank, and everywhere else he could think of that they could possibly be when the moment came. And he practiced them. He timed them. He did everything he possibly could to make sure that he was going to get there at the right time. Now Steve got everything ready uh, for the big day. He packed what they needed in bags and he kept them right at the door. That way, when the time came, he could just grab them and go. Well, the day finally came. Steve and Zoe were sitting down for dinner when Zoe looked at him and said, Oh, I, I think it's time for just a fraction of a section, second. Steve's eyes grew big. That panic look that every man has at that moment. Then. He ran to the door. He grabbed everything he had packed in one go. And out the door he went. He threw everything in the back seat, jumped into the car, put it in reverse, backed out of the driveway, and off he went to the hospital in record time. There's just one small problem. Zoe! He forgot the mommy to be. We would never do that, would we? You know, when we think of the stumbling blocks that James has touched on throughout uh, the letter so far, I can sum it up in just this little phrase. They're the problems that we face when we try to be God. So all the lessons that we've talked about so far are all the problems when we go, you know what, God, I know best. <laughs> you sit back and let me handle this. Well, if I had to sum up today's lesson, I would say this is a problem when we forget God. This is the problem when we forget God. Listen to the example that James starts us off with. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we'll go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. I mean, 
Can you see yourself saying something like this? When we profess a faith in God, I'm sure none of us would ever think that we would forget the Lord. How can you forget God? Yet when we push God to the sidelines, when we say, you know what? I got my plans and I'm carrying them out. I know exactly what we're going to do. That's exactly what we do. And an authentic faith, it is a faith that draws us close to God and that we stay near to him. You know, the opposite holds true. If we try and put God in a box, if we say, you know what? I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. And we do that only on Sundays, you know, and Monday morning comes around and we pull out our day timers or our phones and we figure out this is what I'm going to do today. And tonight I'm going to do this. And oh yeah, you know what? We got to do this, and this, and this, and this. And you don't ever think about God in all of that. We don't say, you know what does God want me to do? That's what we've done. We've settled for a cheap faith where God is pushed to the side and our own self will. What I want to do with my time takes reign in our hearts. Cheap faith leaves us lacking. That's why it's cheap. Cheap faith promises us control, yet it doesn't offer us answers to the big questions of life or provide a certainty in the hard times. James touches on this when he shares in our scripture, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears a little while and then vanishes. You know, when we think of our plans for our future, James challenges us to think about what our future is. How long is a lifespan? How long is a lifespan? You know, just before the service, I was talking to someone. We were comparing the ages of our fathers when they passed away. Their their response was their father passed away in his 90s. Mine passed away in his 50s. What is the length of a lifespan? How much time do we have on earth? You know, when I was in North Bay, I was warned about the shad fly. And uh, you probably haven't heard of the shad fly. I never heard of the name shad fly. They're more commonly known as the mayfly. Does anyone know what the mayfly is? Got a few. Yeah. Okay. So first year I was there, I take the kids to the library. I drive the car to get out. I see this little bug. It's about that big. You know, it's a couple inches long. It's got legs, wings, a tail, a head, right? It lands on my car. Um, my kids were seven and six. So I'm like, guys, guys, come here, come here. Come here. I think that is a shad fly. And we oodled it and goggled it. By the way, I'm going to share in a little moment some unique things about the shad fly. We're looking at that. I pick it up. It doesn't have a stinger or anything. I'm like, oh, look, you know, the kids are holding it. That's really neat. All right, let's put it down, let it fly away. And we turned to the library and the wall moved. The whole wall was covered in shad flies. The whole, I'm not, not, a, not even a centimeter of space. The whole wall was covered in shad flies. Now shad flies are unique as an adult. They don't have stingers. They don't even have mouths. They don't even have a mouth. You know why? Because they only live 24 hours. Their only job is to mate, to lay eggs and die. It's really crazy. By the way, North Bay, when the shad flies come, it's, it's really crazy. When they die, it smells like dead fish everywhere. And it's just, ugh. but anyway, they only live for 24 hours. We think that's really brief, right? We go, oh, 24 hours. Huh. You know, like that's, I got years. Those shad flies are looking at us envious. You know, they're looking at us going, wow, you guys are, Ancient, right? You know, according to the last World uh, Health Organization's data, which was published back in uh, 2020, the life expectancy in Canada has reached 82.2 years. That's really cool. You know, that sounds like a long time, doesn't it? I sure thought it sounded like a long time. In another way, it doesn't. It doesn't because, hey, I'm, I'm getting in my later 40s now. That's, uh, I'm doing the math going, well, wait a second. That's getting up fast. Yeah. Tina and I celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary this year, and I just kind of dumbfounded about how quickly 
it's gone by. You know, 80.2 years, that sounds like a long time, but not long enough. I am reminded of the words of the psalmist who said of God, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? Just think of the things that are around us that have existed so much longer than us. And that will be here long after us. You guys know I love to hike. You know, one of the favorite things that I love to do is put my hands on massive rocks and trees because I know those things are going to be around, you know, way longer than I am. An authentic faith recognizes that life is short. You're not being pessimistic. You know, you're not being a downer by saying, hey, this lifetime is short. I need to invest my time wisely. You know, it's not wrong to say life is short. You better know where you stand with God. You know, we acknowledge our need when we place God at the center of our lives. James tells us instead, here's what we're supposed to do with our plans. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. This isn't just lip service. It's an act of trust. One in which we come to God with our hands open, seeking out his will for our future. You know, I had the opportunity to candidate here. I was approached and said, hey, did you know there's this church in Dundalk that's looking for a pastor? Now, let me ask you, would it have been very good of me as a pastor to say, yeah, I'll, I guess I'll put on my resume and all that kind of stuff and make plans and all that and get here and do my thing without once saying, maybe I should pray about this. Maybe I should ask God. You guys would probably say, well, that wasn't very good as a pastor. Well, the whole, the, that same truth holds true for all of us. We're called to be praying about our future, asking God what his will is. Direct our steps. Lord, please. Here's your homework. James closes the section with these words. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. We have a choice. It's not a hard choice to understand, but it is one that is challenging to carry out. With these truths that James has shared, he calls us to choose to keep God at the center of our lives. It's not enough to say that God is the Lord. He calls us to acknowledge it through our actions. As we make decisions in our life, never forget to bring those choices to God and ask for his leading as we step forward in faith. We are called to be people of faith. Let's do it not only in word, but with our feet, with our hands, and with our hearts. Let us close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, our, our lives are in your hands, and our days, as brief or as long as they may be, belong to you. We are your people, and you are our Lord. God, help us to draw near to you and to put you at the center of our hearts. Not just for the moment, not just for a Sunday morning, but every day of our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. One final song.
Friends, if uh, you feel that, that is that your prayer, that you surrender all? Um, I felt the Lord prompting me to uh, just call on those. I'm going to ask Doug if he can play that song again. If you feel like you have been putting the Lord in second place, that the Lord hasn't been at the center of your heart, I'm going to invite you to come forward as that song is uh, playing and just to come in front of the altar and to... Uh, Share that with the Lord to pray, and if you want me to pray with you, I will. Let's play that song one more time. I surrender all. For any who would like to come forward, please do so when the Lord prompts you.
pray for you today. Give your hearts to Jesus. Let him be at the center of your life. Serve him. Love him. Know that he loves you. Your sins are forgiven. You are a new person in Christ. both we pray that God strengthens you in your faith that God holds you close I pray Lord that whatever those things are in their lives that are occupying at the center of their hearts that you will free them from that that they will see you for who you are the purpose of their life the one who gives them all meaning we thank you God in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fill me with thy love and power. Let thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee. Awesome. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, I have been so encouraged. I think of the morning and the chaos of all of that is so good that we can put all that craziness of our lives to a side and focus on God. Not just Sunday mornings, but every day. Thank you for being with us today. God bless and have a great week.